That's literally all I know. <laughs> what a top deck, dude. Dude, summoning these crazy boards are is so much fun, dude. It'll give me a spell and trap negate. Boom. Cool show cunt. But I'm not done. Adamenta Pedro signs up. Give me another one. Oh, it's, you, you can only just short things by battle for the thing. Again! Bro, I'm summoning everything with the animation, bro. Everyone is here! Everyone is here! Plus Block Dragon, dude! Everyone is here! Let's go! Boom! Oh my gosh. Bro, the boards you can make with this Animancipator deck is just so disgusting. It's so disgusting. I love this. What's up guys, DLE Kamel here, and I'm here to talk about the Synchro Festival and the deck that I'm playing, which is going to be my pure Ad Emancipators, or you can call it Rock Ad Emancipators, Synchro Ad Emancipators. As usual, as per usual with the festival events, it does have to adhere to the specific rules that they have, and that is going to be all Synchro Monsters, Ad Emancipators, usually utilize link monsters heavily but this version will only use synchro summoning so um i'm going to split up the two videos so this one is just going to be purely the deck list along with some tech choices that i found out about as i was playing this and winning games with it i'm almost done with the event i have like 10,000 points and then i'm going to make another video stay tuned for that one that is going to have all of the replays the fire replays from my time climbing the event ladder so i do have a video where i explain in depth how to play the ad emancipator deck it's gonna be definitely in the description and in the annotations for this video so definitely go check that out it's probably gonna be up here somewhere and uh yeah so i don't want to bore you too much with the explanation of ad emancipator so we do have our three basic ad emancipator tuners and these will allow us to Excavate the top five cards of our deck and summon any rock monsters that, you know, we do get from there. And this is going to be our main way of synchro summoning. We get a tuner, we summon a rock from the deck. That's how we make our synchro summons and start climbing the ladder. Now, the main difference here is that with this synchro deck, you really want to find every single way possible you can to get tuners into your hand and then onto the field. Unlike with the link variant, where you just need any monsters on the field and then you can link summon. With this one, we specifically need tuners out. So your regular three tuners, they actually get on the field pretty easily by themselves. Doki Doki is actually the next most important card. This will help you banish, it will discard one rock monster from your hand and then you can get another rock monster from your deck of the same type and level. You essentially want to use this to discard any level 4 monster you have such as Guardian or Supplier or Gigantes and you want to discard them for an Emancipator Analyzer that is a free level 4 tuner out of nowhere just from Doki Doki effect. You could do the same thing with the effects with an Emancipator Seeker and Researcher. Maybe if you have one that you've already special summoned and you can no longer special summon it via its own effect. Well, you can send it, you can discard that card and then special summon one from the deck with Doki Doki. And this extends your plays so, so much. Also, in the way of getting more monsters onto the field, you have Kawaki Meru's Supplier. If you have Supplier in the hand 
in a rock monster goes to the graveyard. Like for a synchro summon, you can special summon this out, so it's good for getting it out. And when it is special summon, you can then search a Kawaki Miru Guardian to your hand. Guardian is a real MVP in this deck because it is your main uh, main deck monster negate. Straight up, once it's on the field, anything that your opponent activates from anywhere, hand, graveyard, field, banished, you can straight up negate it with Kawaki Miru Guardian and negates uh, Maxi and Nibiru, which are the two big weaknesses of Adam Emancipator. And oddly enough, Block Dragon still works in this deck. They did not get rid of it, so Block Dragon is here, and I am playing Foolish Burial to turbo out Block Dragon so that I can always send him from the deck to the graveyard and see him right away. But other than that, you don't really need Block Dragon to pop off, but if you do get access to Block Dragon, your combos are going to be way, way super insane because you can still utilize Block Dragon the way you do in the Link version. You can synchro it off level 8 and 2 to make a level 10 for something like your Baron de Fleur, which is one of your main synchro options. And Block Dragon still as versatile as ever and super useful. For hand traps, we're going Triple Maxi, Triple Ash Blossom, and Double Nibiru. Nibiru has a lot of synergy in Adam Emancipator just because it's a rock and you can special summon it with any of your better Adam Emancipator excavations like the Reptite, which is pretty nice. Maxi, you know, you're going to need Maxi. It's a synchro event. People are spam summoning. You need Maxi. And then Ash Blossom is Ash Blossom. You got to have it. Also playing Call by the Grave in here. Just as well for those pesky effects, man. You, you want to always be able to respond to an Ash or Maxi that your opponent has set up. Now, the last two cards of my main deck are going to be Adam Emancipator Signs and Forbidden Droplets. So Adam Emancipator Signs, I was actually going back and forth quite a bit between some flex tuners that I was playing and Adam Emancipator Signs. I do think Adam Emancipator Signs is super, super good. It gives you a whole nother layer of play after you initially think you run out of steam. You target one rock in your graveyard, special summon in defense position. Then if you special summon an Adam Emancipator, you can then uh, stack the top, stack your deck with a level four or lower rock. So this is extremely nice. Even though if you use an Adam Emancipator that is in the graveyard, when you special summon it back, it will not be able to reutilize its effect. But just being able to bring back a tuner is so, so huge because like I said, the main problem that this deck has is you running out of tuners or running out of access to tuners, depending on how you chain your summons together. Adam Emancipator signs bails you out more than often. If you do open it that way, you, only, you, you are allowed to open one less tuner and make one more play. You can use one of them twice. One of the be best ways I like to utilize this is to utilize the analyzer. After I didn't utilize a bunch of tuners in a turn, I know I have the analyzer in the graveyard from when I was trying to summon Reptite. And then when I have Reptite on the field, I can activate Adam Emancipator Signs, resummon the analyzer, stack my deck, and then make Baron de Fleur 6 plus 10. Very, very nice. You go from having no interruption to having the strongest monster in your deck on the field. Super, super nice. And then Forbidden Droplet here is just my last flex spot. You can put in it whatever you want. I was experimenting with the Adam Emancipator Trap, but I honestly think it is too slow. I play Droplet here just because I have three, but you could honestly play anything that you want. You could play Torrential Tribute. You could play just about anything. Oh my God, my girlfriend stay calling me, dude. Okay. So you can play basically anything here, but you know, Droplet is just my best in slot. You know, you can play, you know, Lightning Storm is something I was experimenting with, Solemn Judgment, you know, anything. Get creative, just whatever super impactful cards that you feel like you could use in that slot. Okay, so that is the main deck down. Now to the extra deck. So the main parts of this extra deck that are from the old Adam Emancipator deck is just gonna be Raptite and drag eye dude everything else i kind of had to fill in the blanks now you want to keep in mind when you're playing this deck your main levels for synchro summoning are going to be level six level eight and level 10. those are your three main levels that you want to aim for with you also having the possibility to go into level 12s and level four synchro so i have a little bit of all of that but we are going to run down the list really quickly. First, we're going to take a look at our level six synchros. The first, the two most important ones we have are Adam Emancipator, Risen, Raptite. A lot of people are opting to play more of this since, you know, having more of it 
Uh, I guess they feel like they're going to be making more level sixes. So why not have more of these? But I really don't think that that is the way. If you want to play this deck essentially the same way or very similar as to how you play the Link deck, and you don't want to have um, more than one Raptite because optimally you want to be making a busted board and Raptite is not going to be a part of your, you know, your plays after your first initial turn. So if you are missing some of these crazy cards in here, maybe you don't have them, playing more Raptite is just fine, but I don't recommend it. We also have Ad Ad Emancipator Risen Leonite. This is here purely because it is an Ad Emancipator level six synchro that I can go into and it just helps me in a situation where I am really lacking on more Ad Emancipator cards. Unless you excavate the top five cards of your deck and then add one Ad Emancipator card to your hand from there. So you can add any of your tuners or your Ad Emancipator signs as well, or this Ad Emancipator crystal. So this card is pretty good when you're playing a heavy Ad Emancipator deck, which we are playing a few more. I don't really go into this guy too much, but he is there nevertheless. We've also got Vulcan. The Divine, this is just a generic level, uh, good level 6 Synchro. It's a turn 2 play. You can target a face-up card you control and a face-up card your opponent controls or return those targets to the hand. And this is good just because, you know, if you have any of your reusable cards out or anything disposable, you can just send them back to the hand and you're good to go. Curtis Charge Warrior is very simple. He's a level 6. It's a tuner plus a non-tuner and you draw a card. That's it, dude. Then you've got Coral Dragon which is on the more important side. I like this card a lot. It has a lot of synergy with the rest of the deck. It's a level six synchro tuner. So this card is a tuner. It is a level six tuner. And it lets you discard one card to destroy a card your opponent controls. And then if it is sent to the graveyard, even for material as a synchro summon, you get to draw another card. And this card synergizes very well with a couple of the other cards that we're going to be playing before that. I want to talk about Herald of Arclight. This is a level four synchro monster that is an Omni Negate. You can uh, just, when a spell trap or monster effect is activated, you can tribute this card and negate it. That is what you want it for. That's the only purpose of it being here. And you're going to summon this by putting together a Doki Doki with either a Seeker or a Researcher. So next we've got level eights. And chat gave me some really good suggestions on level eights. So I'm going to read them off. First, we've got Crimson Blader. This guy is a generic level eight. If it destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, your opponent cannot normal or special summon level 5 or higher monsters during their next turn. So, very, very busted. Once it, its effect resolves, that's kind of just it. Your opponent can't really do anything about it. And they're basically not going to be able to access the extra deck whatsoever after you activate a uh, resolve this effect. So, pretty nice if you are going second and you can attack. Next. We've got Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. This is an, again, generic, level 8. And once per turn, you can destroy as many special summon effect monsters on the field as possible with attack less than or equal to this card. Then inflict 500 damage for each. Absolutely busted. You remove everything from the field that is 3,000 or more and is special summoned, which, dude, during the Synchro event, that's definitely going to be happening. And if it doesn't get negated, you definitely want your opponent to have to to commit several powerful negates to stopping this card. It's an absolute wild card, and your opponent does not see it coming out. We've got Cyframe Lord Omega. Now, this guy is not too powerful. I just play him in the deck because I have him. And basically, during your main phase, you can banish this face-up card from the field and one random card in your opponent's hand. And they stay banished until your opponent's until your next standby phase. Then during your opponent's standby phase, you can target a banished card and add it, return it to the graveyard. And if it's in the graveyard, you target one of the cards in the graveyard, shuffle both that card and this card into the deck. So not super powerful, but it's good for utility if you have it. Again, guys, on the extra deck, if you're low on resources, a card like Cyberframe Lord Omega, it's a UR. It, it's not very powerful. It's not a powerful disruption. I would not craft it if you don't have it. Don't stress it out. Next, we've got Goyo King. This is again generic level eight, but it requires a tuner synchro monster, which is what you're going to be using your coral dragon for. And this thing says when this card declares an attack on an opponent monster, it gains 400 for each earth warrior synchro monster. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can activate one of the effects. You can either special summon that monster to your side of the field or take control of one face up monster your opponent controls. And this is super good. You either get the super the, the monster that you just destroyed, or you can steal a super powerful monster on your opponent's field. Your options are pretty wide with this card. 
Next, we've got Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. This is a synchro monster that also uh, requires a non-tuner synchro monster. So it requires a synchro monster to become, to be a part of the chain. The chain, like the, the non-tuner that you use has to be a synchro. So how do you summon this? You're basically gonna put any level six synchro that you have, except Coral Dragon, with a level two tuner to make Crystal Wing. And Crystal Wing is just a monster effect negate on the field, and then you gain the attack equal to the attack of the monster that you negated. And it gets an attack boost if it battle, battles a level five or higher monster. Very good, it's a negate. I crafted it for this deck, but you don't have to, it's up to you. Next is Hama. This card is a generic level eight, but if you synchro summon it using a synchro monster as one of the materials, either the tuner or the non-tuner, it will be able to attack twice during the turn, which is b -b 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 busted, dude. It's absolutely insane. Then it has these other effects as well that you know you don't really care about. You just want the double attack so that you can OTK. Last level eight, we've got Dragite. You know what Dragite does. You excavate from the top five of your deck and then you bounce cards on your opponent's field equal to the amount of rock monsters that you excavate. Super good. And its second effect does come up a lot in this deck. When your opponent activates a spell, trap, or effect, a spell, trap, card, or effect while a water monster is in your graveyard, you can negate the activation and destroy it. And you should have a water monster in your graveyard more often than not because we do play two Animancipator Crystal Dragites. These help you quite a bit. If you special summon them, they draw you one card on the field. Um, if they're special summoned by the effect of an Adam Emancipator, which is by an Excavate, then you draw a card. Don't really worry about its second effect too much. It's only really usable if your Dragite gets destroyed, then you can add it back to the extra deck for use later. But yeah, dude, Dragite is an Omni Negate when you have these crystals in the graveyard. Very nice. Okay, that's it for the level eights. Last two cards in our extra deck. We've got the level 10 Baron de Fleur, and this is the MVP. If your Synchro Festival deck cannot make Baron de Fleur, you are at a significant disadvantage. This is the best Synchro monster in the game right now. Level 10, generic. Once per turn, you can target a card in the field, destroy it. That's every single turn. Then, once while it's on the field, it has the ability to quick effect negate anything, but only once. Not once per turn, just once. Then, on top of that, during the standby phase, either standby phase, you can target one level nine or lower monster in your graveyard, and then you can special summon it with by returning this card to the extra deck. So let's say you've already used its negate effect. You've gotten most of the value you think you're going to get this turn. Then during the standby phase, if you have something else powerful in your graveyard that has an effect that will pop off, let's say you want to get block dragon out for whatever reason, you want to get drag eye out for a negate, you want to get Crystal Wing out, it's already gone, but you still need a negate, you need something else. You can special summon if you've already used Baron de Fleur's negate. If you have more useful things in the graveyard, get them out. This card is super versatile, and it is way too good not to be playing or building a deck around in this event. Next is the final card, which I did not play with. It was recommended to me after at the end of my stream. This is the level 12 Geomathmech Final Sigma. So this is a level 12 generic, unaffected by card effects, except Mathmic cards, while it's in the extra monster zone, period. So boom, the reason why this is so good, you don't even use the extra monster zone at all when you're only using Synchro, so the extra monster zone for you is always free up, so this always has a place to go, and it will always be unaffected by card effects as long as it is face up on the field, which is b -b -b busted. And then if this card in the extra monster zone battles an opponent's monster, any battle damage it inflicts to your opponent is doubled. If this card is destroyed by battle, or if this card is in its own expansion destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you add a Mathematic card from your deck to your hand, and you won't be doing that because this is the only Mathematic card that you play. You basically just want this for the fact that it is a level 12, 3000 attack point monster that is unaffected by all card effects. So it's basically guaranteed damage and double damage if you are battling a monster. So that is it for my deck list. I want to talk about one other thing, just a couple other tech cards that I was playing with and experimenting around with 
that you might like. So another level 8 that you can play if you do have it is Hot Red Dragon Archfiend. It's not as good as Starlight, but if you do have it, it's a generic level 8 and you can replace it for any of the level 8s that I put in there. And I also want to talk about some main deck options that I found were very useful and that I think that you will too if you don't have some of the higher rarity stuff. Plague Spreader Zombie. This is a level 2 tuner that you can resummon from the extra deck from the graveyard, excuse me, by placing one card from your hand to the top of the deck. This card actually synergizes extremely well with an Emancipator. You can use it for a level two tuner. If you are in a dire need of a tuner, you don't have anything, you can use that. And then when it's in the graveyard, you can place a card from your hand that is a rock monster and put it on top of your deck. Then your next excavate, given you don't search and shuffle your deck, it's going to be that card that you just placed there. You can stack your deck successfully so that you can special summon cards from your hand. Let's say you're in a dire spot and you need to make a Raptite. This card is exactly what you want to see before you do that. You play Spurter Zombie, you summon the Raptites, play Spurters in the graveyard. Then you activate Play Spurters effect, stack your deck. Your Raptite will then excavate, guaranteeing you a summon, and then you can bring back your play spreader and make a level eight. It's so good, such a nice combo. And this is a normal card, so it's a very good tech choice for you, uh, you know, budget players. And next is the Dino Wrestler Coel Asilat. Coel Asilat. Let me know if I just said that right. It's also a level two tuner, and it just has the simple effect of if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card. That's it. That's all we care about. If you control no monsters, your opponent doesn't have to control anything. Just you control none. It's basically better Cyber Dragon for this deck. And it is an Earth monster. So you can banish it to summon Block Dragon. Now, guys, that's all I have to say about Synchro Festival and Emancipators. I hope you guys perform well with this deck. This deck is absolutely busted the boards that you can set up are absolutely insane with four and five synchro monsters plus block dragon the amount of versatility you have is ridiculous i almost never ever brick with this deck and even when my hands are not amazing i can still squeeze out a semblance of a play that'll get me to a winning end game so yeah guys let me know what you think about my deck let me know what you're playing in the comments for the synchro festival and stay tuned for my replay video Guys, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Peace out. I'll see you later.